Here's the hypothetical. Say somehow, some way, there was a group of people that made it through the ironclad southern border that we have in the United States, and they did a planned attack and took out the entire power grid. If you wanted to make that hypothetical even harder, you could imagine this is more of a Red Dawn situation, and after they took out the power grid, they have people on our soil. And if you wanted to take this to the farthest extreme, they took out the power grid, they're on our soil, and this is right when the zombie apocalypse started. That would go into the store without having any more preparation if it happened right now. How long do you think you would be able to survive with what you had at your house? I'm going to be answering that in today's video for myself, but I am interested to know how long you think you could make it. So in the comments below, let me know if that's going to be a few days, a few weeks, months, or if you got a few years in you. Before I make my prediction on how long I would be able to stay kicking in all three of those scenarios, I wanted to show you all of the equipment that I had at the house right now. I didn't do anything to prep for this. This was just out of the blue, an idea I had while looking at all the videos that I needed to make. Now, if you're looking at the situation where they just took out the power grid, this gas mask is going to be pretty much useless. If you're looking at the situation like Red Dawn, this is going to be a nice thing to have. You're still going to be able to shoot with this mask. You can see you have great visibility. You have an air filter here. You're going to be good and set. And if the government decided to go ahead and try to nuke the zombies, this thing's also going to come in handy. Looking at the mask, you're going to have a plug on the right side. Go to the other side, you're going to have a spot to twist in the air filter. They do this so if you're pulling up a gun, that air filter is not going to get in the way of you shooting. Of course, if you're left-handed, you're probably going to want to switch those around. Now, if you wanted to get fancy with it, Myra has some options on their website to really add some advanced options to this mask. We're going to be looking at just the basics. This is the Katina they gave us. You're going to hook that up to that hose and you're going to be able to drink out of this hose inside the mask. Now, if you're looking at that bottle and you're saying that's way too small, that's not near enough water, I completely agree. And even they suggest you go in and get in a different bladder, getting something like a camelback. The bladder that I have is just two liters. It's in my camping gear, but it's better than nothing. If you've been thinking about getting a gas mask or you just wanted to learn more, I'm going to have a link to Myra's website in the description below. They are today's video sponsor along with MyMedic. MyMedic sent over both of these med kits that we're going to be diving into. Of course, I'm also going to leave the link to MyMedic in the description below. They have small med kits, big med kits, and everything in between. Before I got these bad boys, all I had was one first aid box in my truck and then one small first aid box in my hiking bag. So if I got any cuts or scratches, I would be completely covered, but if I got shot and needed a tourniquet, I would be just crap out of luck. But going back to the scenario, I said if it happened today, and as of today, I don't know how to use a tourniquet, so if I got shot, I would still be crap out of luck. Luckily for me, I did just get my concealed carry. After that class, they told me about another class where they could teach you how to do a tourniquet, so I will be learning that soon. But the majority of this pack is pretty easy to understand. Light sticks, space blankets, ibuprofen, different medications. In all three of those hypothetical situations, having this much medical gear is going to be worth its weight in gold. With the big bag and the small bag, looking at how comfortable I feel with all my medical supplies, I'm going to rank it a solid 7 out of 10. I'm feeling pretty good. Now, where I'm feeling a little bit shaky is my water supply. My medical supply, I have a few different packets, some for hydration and some for water purification. And if I go into my hiking gear, I have one or two of the life straws. You read the back of a life straw, those last and filter through thousands of gallons. And even whenever they're used, I bet it's better than nothing. But the problem is, one of those could break, you could lose one. And I know if you needed to, you could make a redneck water filter with sand and cloth and rocks and all the different things. But if you made me rank my water supply or water strategy at the current moment, it's going to be pretty low. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3 out of 10. With water being one of those things that you literally can't live without, it's probably going to be the main factor deciding how long I'm going to be able to make it. I want to say that the average person can go 3 days without water before they die. And then if you have water and salt, you could go a lot longer without food. Now, in all three of those scenarios, you're going to be eating everything in your house that's going to go bad as fast as you can, making sure you don't waste any food. Now, I do buy most of my food in bulk, so it would take me probably a month to eat everything I had that would be perishable. 
Then I'd be soaked with a bunch of beans and rice, oatmeal, and some of these packets here. Some of these look pretty good. Some of them look pretty bad. I'm sort of scared to try the powdered eggs. The oatmeal, you can't mess those up. Some chocolate grain crunch, can't mess that up. For the individual packets, that's probably a day's worth of food. And inside this packet here, probably another day's worth of food. Now, like I said, I've never tested out any of their products. I will soon. I'm going to be doing a full review. But these could suck. They could be amazing. It could go either way. If you wanted to check out their website, in the video description, I'm going to have a link to their website so you could check them out. I would recommend getting some samples first, something like this. And if you absolutely love the samples, you could go to the website and order the bulk version, which is going to be a lot more food for a lot more months. But if I had to rank my food situation from a 0 to 10, it's only going to be a 4. I have rice, I have beans, I have a way to hunt, but I'm not feeling too positive there. Now one thing you want in every single survival situation is a good knife. Now t Kill hooks me up with this bad boy here. This is going to be made in the USA. It's quality. It's sharp. It's going to get the job done. Now, of course, in these situations, I'm going to pack all my cheap Walmart knives as well. They all have their place, but it is nice to have a nice quality knife that you could depend on. Now, I did just receive this knife, so I haven't put it through too many tests. It was sharp enough to go through a shroot book, but I had to put a little bit of force behind it. But I'm still going to say it passed that test. In my camping gear, I do have a sharpening stone, so if this ever gets dull, I'll just sharpen it back up and it's good to go. So we have a good knife, but what guns would I use in this situation? And we're going to go over the top three rifles I would want to have, and the top two handguns. And again, I can only use the guns that I have in my collection. And coming in at number three is the BRN-180, and it's mainly because of how heavy this ammo is. This is going to be 223, and in the Red Dawn situation, it's going to be nice to have an AR. But you got to take into consideration all of the weight. If you're carrying this in a backpack, it's going to weigh you down. Even if you're in a truck, that's going to take more gas. Some of the other guns we're going to be talking about use 10mm, some of them are going to be using 22, and the rest are going to be using 9mm. Coming in at number 2 is going to be the Ruger 1022 long rifle. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to run out of food pretty fast, and this is going to be perfect for small game. But my number one choice for a rifle is actually going to be this ARX-160. You can still hunt small game perfectly fine with this gun, but if you needed to, you could also use it for self-defense against a person or a zombie. And if I happen to break the scope, I got the iron sights on this one. If I did want to hunt bigger game, I could still use that AR-18, hunt a deer or some elk, if I'm being realistic with myself, most of my mills are going to be from smaller game. So the rabbits, the squirrels, the birds, that's going to be what I'm going to have to get used to. Now, I have quite a few pistols, but in this situation, there's two that I would really want. And one of those is going to be my woods gun. This is a Glock 20 10mm. That's going to be if I'm hunting and a bigger game came up on me. I want to have a way to protect myself. And my everyday carry is going to be the Shadow Systems. This is the DR920P. Now, I chose 9mm because in this scenario, this is going to be the most readily available caliber there is. When I run out of 10 mil, I'm probably not going to be able to find any more 10 mil. But if I ran out of 9, I probably could find some 9 somewhere. Now, these are just my top picks of guns I would use. I do have some other guns in the gun safe, so if I was still at home, I could still use those for self-defense. So say it's the first month in this scenario and there's a horde of zombies coming to the house. I have everything boarded up, but they're breaking through somehow. I have a 12 gauge shotgun. It's a kel -Tec. It's a 14 plus 1. I'm probably going to use that as my first line of defense. But if I'm in the woods and I have to carry things around in a backpack, I don't want to carry a bunch of heavy ammo, so the 22 is probably going to be my best friend. Now, of course in my survival gear, I have a bunch of duct tape. But I think I'm becoming more of a zip tie guy these days. Now, one thing that I don't have that I sort of wish I did was a set of plates and a vest to put those plates in. But I have the next best thing and have this bulletproof shirt. This is my first bulletproof shirt. This is from Sylvan Arms. There's actually a plate just like this on the front here that's going to be 3A. You would put this plate in the back. 
This is more of a compression style shirt. They have a strap so you can adjust how tight you want this to stay. 3A plates should be good for 9mm all the way up to 44 Magnum. Now it's still going to hurt like a son of a gun. It's going to hit hard, probably going to break some ribs, but it's not going to penetrate through the shirt. And you could probably guess it, we do have a link to Sylvan Arms in the description below if you wanted to check out any of their products. But we cannot go any further in this video without talking about the Toyota Tacoma. This is my 2014 Toyota Tacoma Off-Road. When you think of Toyota, you think of reliability. And when you think of the Toyota Tacoma, you think of the off-road. So this is the perfect car to have in this situation. Now, I am going to be a little bit biased because I am a massive Toyota Tacoma fanboy. I've had the second gen, I've had the third gen. Right now, I'm rocking the second gen. And you may have noticed, this thing's not completely stock. I went ahead and built this out to be more of an overland slash camping unit. That being said, with all that dry storage, I keep a lot of the equipment for hiking and camping just locked inside the truck at all times, so I'm really ready to go at any moment. Here in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and go through all the dry storage, show you how I have this thing set up. But before you get too excited about this build, I do have a little bit of bad news. Recently, I did trade that rooftop tent. It was an absolutely great rooftop tent. I had zero complaints. It was a little bit expensive, but it was really cool. But I was trying to change my YouTube channel to be a little bit more gun related, so I listed it for sale. Instead of a cash offer, this guy offered me quite a few different guns. One of those guns was the ARX-160. That was the rifle I said would be my go-to gun in any of these scenarios. In that trade, I also got this 45 MMP. The deal also included this PSA build. This is going to be the AR-15 pistol. It had a few attachments with it, I think 7 to 8 magazines. But the thing that brought the value up a lot was it had a thousand rounds of 223 with it. And the last gun in the trade was this KSG. This is from Caltech. This is going to be a 12 gauge. It has two different tubes that hold seven each. So it's a 14 plus one. And with this one, it has a few attachments as well. And it came with 10 boxes of buckshot. He also gave me the rifle bag that held two of the guns, along with some 45 ammo, some 22 ammo. He was looking for a tent. I was looking for some guns, so I think it was a good trade both ways. We don't have the tent right now, but I am going to give you a walkthrough of what we do have on the Tacoma. And starting from the passenger side, the first thing you're going to notice when you open the doors, we have the Classio leather seat covers. Those are going to be genuine leather. We have all of our camping stuff in the back seat, but in the back we have our jump box. So if we ever needed to jump the car, start a battery, charge a phone, we could do that there. Going on to this side, we have our first dry storage. It's going to have plates, all the utensils we need. We have our ice chest on top of the deck system. That's just going to hold all of our drinks, all of our ice, keep everything nice and cold. Going down underneath that, we have the deck system. So when I open up the tailgate, we have two different drawers. Now, of course, if I was taking this in a survival situation, I'd probably take out the football and the frisbees and put some more ammo and guns. Now on this side, I'll probably keep a lot more of this stuff. I have a toolbox in the very back, a fishing box, and then a hammock. And in that big drawer, that box at the very back, that has all my recovery gear. So I have all my tow ropes if I needed to be towed out. And then I have things to plug a tire, things of that nature. Now this is my second dry box. You can see I mainly have shoes, boots, fans, and a jump starter again. If I was packing up my truck in a survival situation, I'd probably have that packed down with food. And behind this seat is that med kit that I talked about, some antibiotics, and a fire extinguisher. You have a great sleeping bag and some pillows in the back. With the Tacoma being such a small truck, all of that added dry storage really does help a lot. So if I had to rate myself on transportation out of a 0 to 10, I'm probably going to give myself a good solid 7. Now jumping back to the guns for a second. I know a lot of y'all are asking, you have the BRN 180, why is that your third choice? And I know I talked about the weight and the ammo. But another thing about this gun is I only have one optic on it. I don't have any iron sights or anything like that. So if I break this optic, I'm going to be crap out of luck and just be shooting by faith. So to answer the question I asked at the beginning of the video, if there was just a blackout, I don't think that's going to last too long. Maybe 4 months to 12 months at the most. And I think I could live that long at my house. I think I lived through that one. Now if there was a blackout and it was the Red Dawn situation... I do live in Arkansas, so they're going to hit some of the bigger places first. We're going to know they're invading, so I'm going to have a little bit of time to probably get into the woods, get in a safe spot, but I'm going to have to watch out for water, make sure that my water filters work. 
I don't think I'm going to make it more than eight to nine months in the woods. And for that last scenario, there's going to be a blackout, there's going to be a red dawn situation, and the zombie apocalypse just happened. Well, more than likely, whatever caused everyone to turn into zombies is going to turn me into a zombie, so I'm already going to be dead. But let's say I don't turn into a zombie. I still think I can make it into the woods. The main factor is going to be what type of zombies I'm messing with. If this is the Walking Dead zombies, I don't think that's going to affect me much at all. It's going to probably be the same 7 to 8 months. Now, if we're talking about World War Z zombies or I Am Legend zombies, those things are going to completely take me out. I don't give myself more than 2 weeks. So, all said and done, I'm definitely not prepared for anything to happen. Now, I did want to give one more shout out in this video to you for watching it to the end. It really does help this channel grow. If you made it this far in the video, go ahead and smash that like button. It tells YouTube that you liked the video and it's going to share that with more people. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. We have a lot of outdoor and gun content coming soon. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.